Do you hear me? <sighs> yes. It's time. I must be off. Can you have a glass of milk? What for? You work hard and you're not made for work. When men are slim, they're strong. Like steel. That's not your case. You were different when we married. And you were too. Now your skin looks pale as if the sun never shines on you. I would like to go to the beach with you for a swim. Or climb the roof when it rains like before. Nothing can be like before. It's been five years since we married. And your face gets sadder and thinner as if you were fading away. Are you finished? Don't take it wrong. I don't, but I'd rather drop the subject. If I was ill, I would like you to look after me. My wife is sick, so I will slaughter a lamb and make her a good meat stew. I will boil this chicken and clear her lungs. I will take the sheepskin and wrap her cold feet in it. That's how I am. That's why I look after you. And I much appreciate it. But you won't let me. When your father was an ambassador, he chose me for you because I was the strongest. I'm not ill. Well, you look it. It's just your imagination. I work hard. Every year I grow a little older. Every year, you and I will stay here year after year. such a sad look on your face, Eva. The work is going well. My political career is about to take off. We have no children to worry about. No children, John. John? Yes? Is it because I don't love you enough? No. Your love for me is strong. I've heard about young women who cried from nerves before they climbed into bed with their husbands. Did I weep the first time I slept with you? My mother cried because I didn't regret leaving her and how right she was. No one was ever happier being married, but still, I... Please, no more of that. All right. I, I'll be quiet. And yet... It's too much having to hear all the time to... No. Don't tell me what other people say. The rain beating down on stone may turn them into soil from which weeds grow and are said to be useless. Weeds may be fit for nothing, and yet I still see their yellow flowers blowing in the breeze. We must wait. I've grown tired of waiting. No, Eva. It's not the right moment. It never is. If you need anything, tell me and I'll get it for you. You know I don't like it when you go out. I never go out. You're better off here at home. The streets are for idlers. Of course.
Where do you come from, my child? From freezing cold heights. What do you need, my love? The warmth of your dress. Let branches sway under the sun and fountains spring around us. Good morning, girl from the wind. Good morning, sir. What you ask for? It's in here. Oh, thank you, Maria. You take care of the kitchen. Are you all right? Oh. Yes, madam. What's the matter with you then? It is nothing, madam. I already feel better. Maria? I didn't really want it, but it's here. How do you feel? I don't know. Worried. Worried? But when did it happen? Tell me. You weren't expecting it. No. No, I wasn't. Oh, my lord. Oh, don't cry, woman. I just want to know how it happened, how it came to you. My grandmother used to say, if you wanted to get pregnant, you had to sing. I sing. How about you? Have you ever held a live bird in your hands? Yes, when I was a little girl. It's the same feeling, but inside you. How beautiful. I'm full of anxiety. I'm confused. About what? About what to do now. I will ask my mother. Why ask her? Is she not old? She's probably forgotten about such things now. Walk as little as possible. And when you breathe, do it as softly as if you had a rose in your mouth. I have heard that later, the child kicks you gently with his tiny legs. Yes, you will love her even more then. You will feel her and say, this is my child. Oh, I'm so ashamed. But why? What does your boyfriend say? Nothing. Does he love you deeply? He never says. He holds me closely, though. And his eyelids quiver like two green leaves. Did he want to be a father? I don't know. He's as shocked as I am. But the first night we spent together just... just a few months ago, he kept whispering to me that he loved me. With his mouth softly against my cheek. So my child seems like a shining dove that he slipped into my ear. How wonderful. But you surely know more about these things than I do, madam. It's true. Why should that be? Of all the brides of your day, you are the only one who... Oh. <sighs> That's how it is. Of course, there is still time. It took my friend three years. And all these women from my mother's day, it won't longer. But I have been waiting too long. It is unfair to waste away my life here. <laughs> Many a night I go out to the jar barefoot to feel the earth under my feet. If I carry on, I, I lose my mind. You sound like an old woman. My goodness. No one should worry about such matters. One of my mother's sisters had a child after 14 years of marriage. And what a gorgeous child he was. What did he do? He bellowed like a young bullock with the force of a thousand cicadas, all buzzing at once. He beat on us and pulled our braids. And when he was four months old, 
He edged our faces with his scratches. <laughs> Had those things on heart. Bah. I've seen my cousin breastfeed her child with the cracked nipples. It's painful, no doubt. But it was a cool, fresh pain, essential for health. They say children make you suffer a lot. It's a lie. That's what weak, plaintive mothers say. Why have a child then? Bearing children is no bed of roses. We must suffer to see them grow. I often think we have to give them half our blood. But that's good. Healthy, beautiful. Every woman has enough for about four or five children, but if the blood goes unused, it becomes poison. That shall happen to me. I don't know what tells me, but I'm not feeling well. You're frightened, just like all first-time mothers. Lucky you. Since you are such a good seamstress, I'd like you to... <laughs> Not to worry. I'll make you a few little dresses. Well, <laughs> thanks. I'll see you later. Okay. Don't run. Be careful with the cabin stones on the street. <laughs> Bye, bye. Come back soon. Well done. Excellent work. You... You must act as if you felt increasingly barren and more frustrated. And you can no longer stand your husband. husband, he should think less about work. He wants to earn money, and he will. But who will get it all when he dies? I'm going out to tend my sheep. Tell John to fetch the two he bought for me. And as to the other affair, he must try harder. That's it. I let him try harder. Harder. I tell you, my child, yes. I am torn and broken for you. Oh, how, oh, how my womb hurts here in your first cradle. When will you come, my child? When your flesh smells of jasmine.
Good evening. Hello. You look rather exhausted. Where have you been? Keeping my husband company. How long have you been married? Five years. Do you have any children? No. You will. Do you think so? Why not? I too am rather tired of accompanying my husband to and fro. He's old and still works. Mine is very ambitious now. He wants to be the grand politician. I have nine fine sons, but no daughters. And so here I am wandering from place to place endlessly. Endlessly. I live across the city. How about you? Outside the city. The city has changed too much. It's not what it used to be. I don't know what the city used to be like. I lived abroad for many years. But I'm here now because of my husband. Is that why you're sad? Look, I've had two husbands, 14 children, five of whom are dead, and yet I'm not sad. And I'd like to go on living a long time. We are very different. Not really. All women deep down are much alike. We're after the same things and fight for them. I... May I ask you a question? I know what you're going to ask. Such matters shouldn't be discussed. Why not? Talking to you has given me hope. I have wanted to talk to an elderly woman for some time because I wanted to find out... What? What you know. Go ahead, then. Ask your question. Why am I barren? Tell me what to do and I will do it. Even if you tell me to stick needles in the pupils of my eyes. I know nothing. Children flow out like water. Leave me alone, my girl. Don't make me speak. There are many things I'd rather not talk about. Why not? Look, do you like your husband? What? Do you love him? Do you yearn to be with him? I don't know. I'm not sure anymore. Do you tremble when he is at your side? Do you feel as if you're dreaming when his lips touch your skin? Tell me. No. I have never felt like that. Never? Well, maybe once with Victor who obviously is not your husband. John is different. My father introduced me to him in Madrid. And I accepted him happily. That is the truth. From the moment we were engaged, I thought about having children. Maybe that's why you don't have any. Men must please us, my girl. They should make our hair fall free and have us drink from their mouths. I try my best. I gave myself to my husband, thinking about our children. I still do. But the baby never comes. Because you're empty. Not empty, but rather full of self-hatred. So tell me, is it my fault? Should I seek in the man just the man and nothing more? Then what should I think when he, he leaves me in the bed with sad eyes staring at the ceiling? as he turns over and falls asleep. Shall I think about him or what may come from my womb? I don't know. You tell me. How sweet you are. Please leave me alone, though. I don't want to talk anymore. These are matters of honor, and I don't intend to abuse anyone's honor. I just want you to help me. I don't know. Anyway, you should be less naive. You are quiet about it and walk away with the all-knowing look of a doctor. And yet you deny water from someone dying of thirst. I could talk with a more serene woman. Not with you, though. I'm old and know what I'm saying. Then God help me. God? No. I've never liked the idea of God. 
When are you going to realize that God doesn't exist? It is men who must help you. How can you say that? Though there ought to be a God, however small, to send bolts of lightning to those men with rotten seeds who turn joyful fields into barren soil. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Well, I understand myself. Eva? Eva, it's me, Victor. Don't you remember me? How could I possibly forget you, Victor? You're my best teacher. Is that what you recall of me? You were the most brilliant actress at the University Theatre School. <laughs> no. I was just pretending. That's what acting is about. Lying, right? If you want to put it that way, let me tell you there was plenty of truth in each of your lies. Plus, lots of passion. Life without passion isn't worth living. Or at least that's what you used to say in your classes. I still don't understand why you gave up becoming an actress to Mary John. I wanted to become a wife. A mother. No, it's not true. It was your father, the ambassador, who chose for you. John was a rich man with a future. And I was a poor professor of drama. That was my duty as a daughter. I suppose that by now, you'll have at least three children or more. No. No. I'm producing a play by Lorca. <laughs> Lorca, always Lorca. My favorite author. I know, I remember well. I was thinking that maybe you could give me a hand with the staging. Like when you were a student. <laughs> oh no, Victor. I'm no longer a student. That's all in the past. It would be amusing. We'd remember. They're good old times. Good old times that will never come back. What are you doing here? Where have you been? I was in the park talking to a woman. I wish you hadn't left the party. At least, you should have been home when I got here. I got held up. I don't see what delayed you. We shouldn't give people something to gossip about. What do you mean, John? I'm not saying it's because of you. It's because of other people. You are now the wife of a political candidate. To hell with other people. Don't curse. It's unbecoming in a woman. If only I were a woman. Let's put an end to this conversation. Go to bed and sleep. 
And you? I'll go later. I don't feel like sleeping right now. Neither do I. I just told you to go to bed. I don't like gossip. Well, we do talk here. There's no harm in it. Whoever wants honor has to earn it. I planted thyme, and I watched it sprout. Whoever wants honor must earn it, no doubt. Well said. But nothing is known for sure. One thing is so certain. The husband brought his two sisters to live with him. The old spinsters. Yes. They used to take care of the church, and now they'll take care of their sister-in-law. I couldn't bear them. Why? Because they give me the creeps. They are like those large leaves that sprout up over tombstones. They are really waxy and all tornied words. I reckon they're most good for the lamp oil. But does anybody know what actually happened? Her husband doesn't trust her. Why not? Apparently, the lady finds it hard to stay at home. Well, that's the way those well-to-do ladies are. When they should be making lace or pancakes, they'd rather climb on the roof and walk barefoot in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> she has no children, but I bet it's not her fault. Women who want children have them, but those who are feeble, they cannot bear a wrinkled belly. <laughs> <laughs> They put on face powder and rouge and pick on a bouquet of oleander and then go looking for anyone but their husbands. Have you seen her with another man? Not us, but others have. <laughs> Always others. And what were they doing? They were talking. Talking is not a thing.
In this world, just a glass can mean something, as my mother used to say. A woman looking at a rose bush isn't the same as a woman looking at a man's eyes. She looks at him. At whom? Someone. And when she's not looking at him because he's not around, she has his portrait in her eyes. And what about her husband? The husband acts deaf and dumb, like a motionless lizard in the sun. It would all be sorted out if they have children. It's his own fault. If a man can give her children, he should take better care of his wife. It's her fault, because she has a tongue as hard as flint. Why the hell do you talk about her like that? I like to stick a knitting needle into all gossiping tongues. Excellent. That's enough for today. We'll take it from there tomorrow. Thank you. How long have you been here? I didn't want to bother you. You're always so tactful. So, did you still want me to give you a hand? You say she left a while ago. She must be at the park. But you know I don't like my wife to go out alone. I'm fed up. She's away while I kill myself working. I have to make a living outside this house, but my honor is here. Have you been to the store? Yes, I uh, wanted to buy you a few things to make you a nice meal. I can't eat now. I must go back to work. Won't you stay for a while? No. You know what my duty is. Every man has to live his life. And every woman has, so I think you can live in peace. To live in peace, one has to be at ease. And you're not? No, I'm not. You know what I think. The sheep in the fold, and the women at home. You go out too much. The women stay at home when the home isn't a tomb. When the chairs and linen sheets wear out with use. But not here. Every night when I go to sleep, the bed seems newer, a gleam, as if it was just delivered from the shop. You know that I have a right to complain. That I have good reasons to be watchful. Watchful? About what? Have I offended you? I am obedient to you, and anything I don't like, I keep to myself, and it gets worse every day. Eva! Let's not talk. I will learn to bear my cross as best I can. But don't ask for anything more. If I suddenly turn into an old woman with a mouth like a wilted flower, I might be able to smile. But now just leave me alone with my thorns. I don't understand you. I deprive you of nothing. I buy all the things you like. I just want to sleep away from home knowing you are here asleep too. But I don't sleep. I can't sleep. Do you need anything? Tell me. Answer me. Yes, I need something. Always the same thing, children. Every day, the same old story. I've almost lost interest in it. But I'm not you. Men have another life. Their jobs, trips. Camaraderies. Women only have children and taking care of them. You're so obsessed with that idea. Like with the attic. What attic? Come. is an empty attic, not a baby's room. You don't know what you're saying. I know perfectly well, and also that being around you, one feels only discomfort and uneasiness. You should resign yourself to it. 
when my head is bound with a cloth, so my mouth remains shut, and my hands are fastened tightly in a coffin, that's when I'll resign myself to it. So, what do you want, then? I want to climb a mountain, and I have no feet. I want to embroider my dress, and I cannot find the thread. I'll wash your fine ribbons in the cold water stream. Your joyful laughter is like gleaming jasmine. I'll wash your fine ribbons in the cold water stream. Your joyful laughter is gleaming jasmine. Thank you for accompanying me, Maria. I was feeling overwhelmed. Do you feel all right, madam? Yes. I was just thinking, damned be the day I let my imagination carry me away. It grieves me to see you like that. It's only envy. Meanness and cruel envy is what I feel, Maria. Please, don't complain. How can I not complain when I see you and other women bursting with flowers from within? But you have other things. If you listen to me, you'd be happy. Women who don't have offspring are as useless as a handful of thistles. better if I don't ever touch you again. I seem to lack a mother's hand. Why do you say that? Because I'm tired of having hands and not being able to use them for something of my own. I feel grieved and humiliated. Why? Because the fountains give water endlessly. The sheep bear many lambs and the bitches puppies. The whole world seems to want to show me its newborns, while I feel two hammer blows here, instead of an infant's little mouth. I don't like what you're saying, madam. Women with children don't think of those who don't have any. Just as those who swim in fresh water have no notion of thirst. You must get over your displeasure. With every passing moment, I feel more yearning and less hope. I'll end up believing I'm my own child. When are you going to start trying to be happy? Don't worry, Victor. I'm enjoying working on the play with you. You could do more than that. What else can I do? Live a life that isn't mine? To escape a reality that is choking me? Exactly. That's why I like to propose something to you. How would you like to play Maria's role? What? The actress is going to the United States. She's been offered a part in some film that is going to be shot over there. I need a substitute. And I thought about you. I can't do it, Victor. Of course you can. It's just a matter of wanting to do it. It's not that easy. All you have to do is allow yourself to be guided by your instinct. Why don't you do that if only once? Father. But don't, don't realize 
eyes that, that if I so desired that I could become a torrent and put them away. Even so, I think your husband still loves you. My husband? My husband gives me food and shelter. He's awake. He'll start singing in a short while. This is a great country, and we deserve better. And I promise that I will lead this party into a better future. Thank you for coming with me. I'd go with you to the end of the earth. John would be very happy to see you again. Hi, Victor. It's been a long time. It's a shame. You're leaving soon and we can't reminisce. You're leaving? After Yerma premieres in the city. You're going back to Spain, right? Probably. I didn't know. The theater company wants me too. Ah, oh, you're right to seek new pastures. Old pastures are very much alike. No, I'd go really far away if I were you. It's all the same everywhere. The same sheep yielding the same wool. Although there are some things that can always change. And some that never do. There are things confined behind walls that can't change because nobody sees or hears them. That's the way it is. But if they suddenly appeared and cried out, they would fill the world with my anguish. I can only say yes, my child. I am torn and broken for you. Oh, how my womb hurts here in your first cradle. When will you come, my child? When your flesh smells of jasmine. You're all right, Mother. I'm so hungry. I think I fell asleep. Hello, Victor. treatment I've gone through hasn't worked either? No, I'm afraid it hasn't. It seems that some men like yourself are not meant to have any children. Of what use is this infertile seed of mine then? What a shameful waste. How pointless. As meaningless and as pointless as a whimsical wind blowing across the golden wheat fields. The crop sways to and fro, but the grain isn't scattered. I'm not as keen on having a child as my wife. Well, you will still have to tell her sooner or later. There is no other possibility. 
Perhaps by now, words are useless too. a good wife. You're trying to ruin me. I don't know what I am. Let me be and vent my sorrows. I haven't failed you in any way. I don't like people pointing at me. That's why this door must stay closed tight with you here in the house. Talking with people is no sin. But it may appear that way. Whenever people engage you in conversation, just keep your mouth shut. And remember that you're a married woman. Married? There is such a thing as family honour. A load we all have to bear. Although it may run dark or pale in one's veins. Forgive me. You look at me as if I shouldn't forgive you. 
but force you to obey me or lock you up the way a husband should. This is a great country, and we deserve better. Guess what I bought? I didn't want coffee for breakfast, uh, sugar, bread. No. I bought lace, three lengths of cloth, thread, ribbon, <laughs> and coloured wool to make tassels. Thank you. I do you want to make a blouse for yourself? No. It's for, you know, you see? It's arrived. <laughs> In only five months. Yes. The harvest comes to the hands of the worker who seeks it. Now we have so many sheep, there is no place to put them. The earth is large. We can go together as far as this stream. I wish great happiness upon this house. <laughs> May God grant it so. Very well. Let's go. Germa! 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 Germa. Suppose we should say farewell, right? I'm leaving for Spain early tomorrow. Have a pleasant journey. Why didn't you? Because I'm a married woman. Goodbye, Eva. Call me Irma. I am Baron. Day has come, my girl. You requested my help, remember? Yes. It will be tonight. You will come to my house. not, my girl. Be courageous. Let's turn barren earth into fertile fields.
will breathe. There is no power on earth as great as desire. Do you feel all right? Many a time I have said those prayers with women who yearn for a child, and all of them were frightened, all except you. My sole concern is the result. I don't think you're a deceitful woman. I am not. May my mouth fill with ants like the mouths of the dead if I have ever lied. The last time I performed a ritual, I prayed with a beggar woman who'd been barren longer than you, and her womb became so divinely fertile that she gave birth to two infants down by the river because she had no time to even reach her house. She brought them to me herself wrapped in cloth for me to look after. She arrived with her shoes and skirts soaked with blood, but her face was shining. And nothing bad happened to her. What should happen? Why would anything happen? She simply picked up her newborns and washed them in running water. Animals lick their newborns clean, don't they? My child couldn't disgust me. I think women who have just given birth are radiant from within. And the babies sleep for hours at their bosom, listening to the flow of warm milk from their breasts for them to suckle and play with until they don't want any more. Until they raise their little heads and their faces and chests are covered with white droplets. You'll have a child now, rest assured. I will because I must. Otherwise I don't understand the world. Sometimes when I feel certain I never will. Tongues of fire rise within my body from my feet. And everything feels empty. The men walking on the street, as well as the animals and stones, appear to me as if they are made of cotton. And I ask myself, why are they here? The important thing in the world is to let life carry us along. You're old and see things like a well-read book. But I'm thirsty and have no freedom. I want to hold my child in my arms so that I can sleep peacefully. Listen closely and do not be afraid of what I say. Even if I knew my son was going to make me suffer terribly later on, and hate me and drag me by the hair through the streets. I would still welcome his birth with delight. Because it is better to cry over a human being that hurts us. Than live with this phantom that haunts my heart year after year. Tonight you will lie with your husband and very soon you'll be a mother. intend to ask you where you have been all day. I have done nothing wrong. I am here. If I could, if I could, I'd yell and wake up the whole town so they would know how the honor of my house has been stained. But I must keep it to myself because you are my wife. I too would like to shout loud enough to wake up the dead so that they might bear witness to my innocence. That's not true. I can tolerate anything but lies. You deceive me, you trick me, and I've run out of ideas to stop your shrewd schemes and plots. I've done nothing wrong. You've been doing wrong since the very day we married. Piercing me with your looks of daggers, 
lying awake at night beside me with your eyes wide open, sighing wickedly into the pillows. Be quiet. I cannot take it anymore. I need to be made of steel to put up with a wife who wants to dig her nails into my Don't. heart. And who leaves the house at night looking for what? I won't allow you to say another word, not a single one. Come close if you wish. Smell my clothes. Do you detect even the slightest scent that's not yours? That's not from your body? Spit on my naked body in the middle of the street. Do what you want with me since I'm your wife. But take care not to pin another man's name on my bosom. It's not I that pins it. It's your behavior that does that. And everybody's starting to talk about it. I don't know what a woman seeks when she leaves her house at all hours. Listen to the penitent in her sacred pilgrimage. Let your rose and a thousand thorns blossom in my flesh. Oh God, who created the roses, please do not allow mine to wither. Bring the rose of wonder to my suffering flesh. I'm looking for you, John. It's you I seek all night and day without ever finding refuge to draw breath. It's your help and blood that I need. body release the most beautiful thing in the world into the air. Go to sleep. Madam, what are you doing? Just ambling about. This is my boyfriend. We have come to introduce our daughter. The baby's father. Do you want to hold her? Of course. Such a defenseless little child. Things that seem harmless to us could do away with her. A small needle, a gulp of water. Give her to me. Next year we'll have another one. And then we'll get married.
Why did you come here? I don't know. You're not convinced? It has to do with your husband. I couldn't tell you before, but now I can. So what are you going to tell me? That which can no longer be hidden. That which must be shouted from the rooftops. It is your husband's fault. Do you hear? Let my hands be chopped off if I am mistaken. Neither his father nor his grandfather behaved like men who breed well. For them to have a child, heaven and earth had to come together. They're made of spittle. But your family is not. You have brothers and cousins. Behold what a curse has befallen your beauty. A curse. A plague of poison on the crop. Aye, but you have feet that can carry you away from his house. You think I should leave? I have a son who is single, strong, and healthy. His house needs a woman. Mate with him, and the three of us can live together. He is fertile like me. If you enter my household, there's still the scent of babies. The ashes of your quilt will turn to bread and salt for your children. I cannot do that. Come, pay no attention to others. Hush. It is not like that. I can't go to another man. What about my honor? Some things are not possible. Water cannot run uphill. And the full moon will never show itself at noon. I only want to help you, my girl. Do you think I would yield to another man? That I could go and beg for what is mine like a slave? I am not seeking that. When one is thirsty, one is thankful for water. I am an arid field with a thousand oxen pulling a plow, and you offer me a glass of water. My grief goes far deeper than the flesh. Then stay that way if you so wish, although your husband is the one to blame. Remain barren, like a thistle in the wasteland. Barren, yes. I know that, barren. There's no need to throw it in my face. Don't take pleasure like a child in the suffering of a small creature. Ever since I've been married, I have been pondering on that word. And yet, this is the first time I hear it. The first time I've heard it to my face. The first time I admit it is true. You awaken no sympathy, none at all. I will look for another woman for my son. A woman must know which man she should choose. You erred and are now paying dearly for your mistake. It is your husband's fault. Now, I will let my body release the most beautiful thing in the world into the air. Be quiet! Behold what a curse has befallen your beauty. It's your husband's damnation that condemns you to remain childless for the rest of your life.
give you all your new minister, John Stone. Lumbering moon. These two springs of milk in my flesh are like the beats of horses' hooves that stir and deepen my anguish. Why are you here? Did you come to celebrate my victory? Victory and my defeat. What do you mean? We need to talk. Not here. I think it's time I spoke too. Speak then. And time I complained. About what? I feel an unending bitterness in my throat. And I in my bones. This is your last opportunity to refrain from moaning endlessly over shadowy things that don't exist. Over things that are lost in the wind. Things that don't exist? Lost in the wind, you say? Things that haven't happened and which we cannot control. Things that don't matter and which are of no importance to me. Do you hear? That is what I had to say. Well, this matters to me. You hid it from me right from the start. I just said there are things that are of no importance to me. All that matters to me are those things that I can see with my own eyes. The truth cannot be felt inside oneself. But how imposing it is. How loud it cries when it comes to light and raises its arms. I think that it had to be so. Eva, listen to me. Call me Yerma. Baron, for that is what I've become because of you, a barren woman! Please listen to me. Many women would be happy to have your life. Without children, life is sweeter, more peaceful. It isn't our fault. What are you seeking me then? Just you. You wanted a home, tranquility and a wife, nothing more, isn't that right? Yes, that is so. And our son? Didn't you hear what I just said? It doesn't matter. Don't ask me again. Do I have to scream in your ear so you can understand and live peacefully for once? And you didn't even think about it, even when you knew how much I wanted a child. Never. <sighs> Eva, please accept it. Resign yourself. Baron. But peaceful. What do you want from me? I want you. You look beautiful. You want me as if you want a pigeon to eat? Kiss me. suddenly to see if my blood will bring new blood.
What do you want? Come closer, if you will. For I have killed my child. I have killed my only son! Otra letra más que se escribe sola sin necesidad. Otra lengua más que se seca porque no le queda nada que contar. Otro día más que el sol sale por costumbre y tú no quieres despertar. Otro cante más que sustituye mi ganas de llorar. 